Yo, what's up guys? It's Josh back with another video and welcome to the Keep It Techie channel. And today we're diving into the latest release of Kai OS version 2024.9. Now, if you're new here, my channel is all about helping you learn Linux and get into the tech field. I also break down complex stuff so you can build your skills and elevate your career. And as always, I'm here to make it fun. And let's be real, Linux can be intimidating when you're first starting out, but that's what makes it fun and interesting. So let's go down and dive right in. All right, so I'm at kiosx.us. And of course, I'll have the link down in the description of the video. But what's the deal with Kai OS? Kai OS is essentially an independent rolling release distro focused on the KDE desktop environment. I mean, you won't find GNOME or XFCE here. This distro is laser focused on delivering the best possible KDE experience. And with Kai OS 2024.09, it comes with all the KDE goodies like Plasma 6.1.5, KDE Gear 24.08.1, and the KDE Framework 6.6. .6. And if you're a developer or power user, you will appreciate the under the hood updates. We're talking about Linux kernel 6.10.11, Mesa 24.2.3 for the latest graphic support and even open ZFS 2.2.6 for your file system needs. I mean, that's some serious hardware support right there. Plus, KaiOS has updated core components like systemd 253.25, boost 1.85.0 and open SSL 3.3. If those names don't ring a bell, no worries. Just know that this distro is optimized for modern system. And it's also super sleek. Oh yeah, and how could I forget the Caligra Office Suite, which is now the default over LibreOffice. Now I haven't played around with Caligra, but I'm definitely gonna keep this distro around so I can test it out for myself. But if you're tired of LibreOffice or just looking for something different, KaiOS has you covered with Caligra 4.0.1, which has been fully revamped, is sleek, and you know, trying to give LibreOffice a run for his money. Now, will it succeed? That's a question for another day. Now, let me walk you guys through some of the information. So if we click on news, you can go into the latest news for this distro. It gives you all the information I pointed out for this release. Let me show you guys how to download it right fast. All you have to do is go to the download page, obviously, and then you can download it from here. You can click the check mirror, the USA mirror, the Kansas City US mirrored as a Japanese mirror. So it's hosted in a couple different places. So you'll be able to get it no matter where you are. And you check right here, this is a SHA-256 as well as the size of it is 3.5 gigabytes. And this gives you all the information for the current version as well as known issues. Like installing on RAID is currently not possible. Just something you need to, you know, check out and make sure. And then authenticity checks, it gives you a way to actually check the ISO that you have. And then we click here and it takes you right back to the release notes. This is a more in-depth release notes and I recommend you guys check this out. So you see everything that's included in this distro. I kind of highlighted just the major things that stood out to me. Now, let's go down and hop over to my virtual machine so I can get this thing installed. They have remapped the installer. That's another cool thing that I saw. So we'll look at that right now. All right, so I'm booted up into the live ISO and ignore the top. You can see like IP addresses and all that stuff. This is just a virtual machine. It'll correct itself when we bring up the operating system. Let's go on and go through and show you guys the options. So we got start KaiOS live, or you can open up the NVIDIA non-free version. You can boot from the hard disk if you have something already installed, hardware detection tool, and then memory test. So we just gonna hit the start Kai live, and it's a boot from the ISO. So let's wait for this thing to come up. All right, so we're booted into the live ISO. Let me walk you guys through the installer, but as you can see here on the welcome screen, you got a couple options here. So install KaiOS, which is what we're gonna do. You got your guide, you got your form, documentation links, donate, and you can use the system how it is now. Using the live ISO, you can obviously close this welcome screen and just play around with the system before you install anything. But we're gonna go through the install and show you guys the full process right fast. So as you can see, it's pretty simple. I mean, and one thing I wanted to point out to you guys right here, there is a breakdown of known issues. You can go there, you can go to the release notes as well as donate to support the project. But let's run through the full process. As you can see, this is our buttons to move forward and we can also cancel if we need to back out of it. So right now it's currently set to American English. That's what we want. So we're gonna go with that. It's gonna pull up your location. 
Yeah, and that's fine. Mine's pulling up somewhere in Denver. As far as the pin goes, it's saying between Kansas City and Denver. And it might be because I'm using a VPN. I'm not 100% sure, but Denver, Colorado, and Kansas City. So that's that's weird, but it actually shows my time zone as American Los Angeles. So let's go down here next there, English, and then we're going to use the default for the keyboard next. Now it's going to automatically select Caligra. You still have the option to select LibreOffice if you want to roll with what Caligra is attempting to do, which is replace Office on the system. You can go to it and use it. You can also select no Office Suite or you can do a minimal install. That's one cool thing about this installer. It allows you to make changes to it depending on how you want to do it. Now with audio, you got two options and it's been around for a while for our Linux distros. It's two main audio frameworks out there. The main one that's currently taken over. It used to be Pulse Audio. But now Pipewire is like the primary that's everyone is switching to on these systems. It's supposed to be better, you know, minimal overhead and a lot of updates to it that make it a whole lot better than Pulse Audio, which is what I remember using, you know, years ago. But anyway, Pipewire, let's roll with that. Even though I don't have any audio assigned to this virtual machine, just wanted to at least point it out to you. Uh, so you select your drives, erase the disk, and the option to use no swap or swap, swap hibernate, swap to file. We can select uh, swap to file. And then you got your file system, you XFS, you could do EXT4, BetterFX, ZFS. So you can choose whatever you want. It supports at least those four file systems. And I'm going to roll with the default they had there, which was XFS. We're going to roll with that. You can also encrypt the system if you need to. And then also down here is the master bootloader location, which is on that main device. Now, you got a couple options here. So Grub, if you want to select your bootloader, you can also select no bootloader. That means that you will install your own. Don't select this unless you know what you're doing, because you're going to end up with a system that does not boot because there won't be a bootloader on it. We're going to roll with Grub2, which is fine. And let's set up our first account. So Josh, and then let's name this KaiOS so, or KOS, however y'all want to say it. All right. And then we typed our passwords in and then also you can log in automatically. Now be weary when you're recording. I just want to show you guys that uh, I'm going to cut this port out of the video or the port before this where I typed in my password because it shows the password on screen. Uh, it's one of those ones or passwords. When you type it in, it shows you the character before hiding the character, which I really dislike that because it, it, it really only affects people that are recording. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to give out a password or maybe use a password that you use for other systems. Someone can see it. You know what I'm saying? So like right, right here, watch. I'm gonna just type in here. So you see how it shows the text? That's yeah, that's not good. So we're going to back that off. But anyway, got my passwords in. We want to reuse our passwords for the root of password. That's fine. Or you can type in a different password if you uncheck this box. You can also select login automatically without asking for a password, which don't recommend you doing. And then also validate password quality. So you could check that and that'll just validate the strength of your password and suggest you to create a stronger password if you created a, a very weak password. This is a summary. This is just going to break down everything that it's going to do. As you can see, location, keyboard, packages, audio, partitioning, and then the bootloader. So let's go down and hit next there. And this will start the install of Kai or KOS 2024.09. So let's hit install now. And this will go through that process. And I'll be back when it finishes. All right, the installation is complete. As you can see, you can close the installer or restart the system. What we're going to do is restart it so we can see the system, you know, a new system fully built and set up. And I can walk you guys through a little bit of the system and I can give you guys my thoughts. So I'll be back when it comes up. All right. So this is the login screen. Just to show you guys right fast. You have sessions you can select. So right now it's using Wayland Plasma or you could do Plasma X11. We're going to roll with the Wayland since I hear a lot of people talking about it. So let's go and type in our password for the accounts and log in right fast. Now, that's one thing about KaiOS or KOS. If you look at it, the design is super cool. They got animated, you know, backgrounds moving and all that stuff when you're loading or loading screens and all that stuff. So they try to make this as clean and sleek as possible when it comes to KDE. Now, here is the system start page. So. As you can see, this breaks down everything about Kai OS or KOS. You can change your styles. This basically allows you to modify the system however you see fit. So widget style, you can go in here and make changes to that. It's going to open it up so you can go through and make changes. That's basically the application settings. You can go in and select what you want. I'm going to use the defaults right now. You can change the plasma theme. We all know I like a dork theme. So let's see if we can roll with something dork. So that breeze dork theme. Let's see what that looks like. If it'll switch up, it's taking a minute, but oh yeah, we got to hit apply down here. 
and boom we got a darker theme so actually i, I kind of like the lighter theme you can see things a little better you can see you know all your icons and stuff there let me go back to this hit apply let's just roll with this theme but i definitely want to change the background now you do have your window de decorations you can make changes there you can change it to this dork which i really like you guys know i like those dork themes so let's roll with that see what that looks like it looks a little better you know mouse behavior you can change your your mouse the way it looks icon sets virtual desktops so you can modify that like your screen settings color font and actually let's go to our screen settings and make the changes so it'll be 1920 by 1080p so we can see it a little better or i can see it a little better it'll be full screen you guys decide and won't have that blackboard on the right hand side and it looks like it got reverted let's go down and try it again right fast and see what happens let's press okay and see what happens there we go all right so let's just wait for the system to kind of catch up with itself because like i said i'm running this in a virtual machine it's a little difficult to get things working right in a virtual machine as you can see let me actually fix this all right cool so that's fixed and let's see what else we got up in here we got packages you can go through and install packages so you could get uh package groups so if you go in here and select what you want like for instance let's say you want to add firefox or google chrome or opera you can go in and select what you want go back go up in here to your email clients you got kmail which is kde's you know mail or email tool that you can install and then you also have thunderbird which i'm glad they have at least an option in there you don't have to just use strictly kde software you can use what kind of what you want based on what they have available to you music players eliza strawberry i've used strawberry i think i talked about strawberry in the past it's super cool image manipulation we can get gimp in here Krita, digicam let's see what else we got up in here office application so if you want to use some of these like scrooge seagull i didn't heard of focus right i didn't use that one before let's see video editor so you got kaden live lightworks open shot whatever you want you select those packages you can of course install whatever you want on here that's in the repositories i'm just showing you guys what they have available to you from the start page and let's look at a few more things right fast so we can go to wallpapers you can make changes to your wallpapers you can download wallpapers all that stuff docs it uses the pac-man package manager but you also should have access to the aur the arch aur let's see advanced so you got firewall settings and all of this stuff can be accessed from the system settings in here so if you go into here you can go into system settings and you can find all these changes you don't have to do it within the start menu you can start building out your system as you go through so let's go to about and this will give you all the information about the distro the news on the release same stuff you know that we've seen in the past and that's pretty much it for the start menu and you can turn it off if you don't want it to show up every single time and you can always find it under your start menu you can search for it start uh, menu or whatever you know what i'm saying and open up the start menu the system start page and open it up and this will you know walk you through everything now in order to save time i'm gonna go through every application in here but as you can see you can add whatever you need in here but you also you know have pre-installed applications on here like i said your office stack is uh caligra so you'll have caligra sheets the caligra word and caligra stage which is like your presentation application but i don't want to go through too deep into it i want you guys to explore it when you install it i just want to show you guys how to install it get it set up okay so i haven't looked at kai os or kos since two years ago but what is my take on it since the last time i seen it well let's start with the good if you're a kde fan this distro is like a candy store plasma 6 is looking sharp and kde gear and framework just adds to that Everything's built on the latest QT 6.7.2, so the performance is tight. It's also smooth and responsive, and it makes even older hardware feel a bit snappy from what I did while testing it on physical hardware. Now, I gotta say though, the decision to switch to Caligra as the default office suite is a bit interesting. Like, this is the first distro I have seen that has done this. LibreOffice is most of the time the main option when installing a office suite on your Linux distro. Sometimes you'll see OpenOffice, but mainly LibreOffice. But Caligra, that's super cool to actually see. I mean, it's a solid suite, don't get me wrong, but if you're someone who needs full compatibility with Microsoft Office files, you might want to keep Libre around. And I'm glad they have that option in there during the install. So it's really no harm there. You know what I'm saying? You have the option. Now, another thing I like, the attention to detail with the install options. Being able to select your Office suite and sound backend shows that kai os is catering to a more advanced audience 
And if you're someone who likes to tinker and optimize, I believe this distro gives you a lot of control without being overwhelming. It's like they struck that sweet spot between customization and usability. Now, on the flip side, the fact that it doesn't support RAID installation could be a deal breaker for some. It's not a massive issue for most desktop users, but if you're setting up a home server or let's say a NAS, that's something to consider. And most of the time you will want to install a server version of a distro anyway, so shouldn't be that big of a deal. But also Secure Boot is not being supported yet. It's not a huge surprise, but in 2024, you kind of expect that feature to work out of box. But at the end of the day, it's not a deal breaker, but it's worth mentioning. Now, to be honest, I love the rolling release model. You guys know I'm an Arch user, so I really like that model. And the fact that you install once and just keep updating forever with, you know, pseudo Pac-Man dash SYU, that's what I'm talking about. No need to reinstall every six months like some other distros. KaiOS gives you that long-term peace of mind with minimal hassle. All right, guys, so that's my review of Kai OS 2024. Overall, this distro is for KDE lovers who want a clean and efficient and up-to-date system. And the focus on KDE is refreshing and the rolling release model makes it a set it and forget it kind of deal. And if you're someone who loves the idea of a sleek KDE experience, but doesn't want to deal with the bloat of a distro that tries to be everything to everyone, give Kai OS a shot. And hey, let me know in the comments if you've tried KaiOS before or if this is your first time hearing about it. I love to know your thoughts. And before I go, don't forget to subscribe to Keep It Techie if you haven't already. I got more Linux content on the way, so stay tuned. I know I took a little bit of a hiatus and slowed down on the video production because of a lot of issues going on either at home or at work. I'll definitely be pumping out more content, you know, pretty soon. But peace y'all and remember, stay learning. Stay exploring and of course, keep it techy. Whenever I talk to people, whenever I mentor people uh, dealing with, you know, getting into tech, you got to figure out what you like or what you're interested in. Cause yeah, a lot of people get into the, you know, tech field because you can make a good amount of money. The money is the motivator, but you also, in my opinion, in order for you to be happy, you got to like what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And so like for me, a lot of times it doesn't feel like work, bro. Most times it really doesn't feel like work. It's, it's, yeah, I'm doing something fun. I'm doing something I love to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's what makes it, you know, great for me.